All right, folks, we're back from break. We're ready to get back into a little computer science. Uh, and this lesson is on subroutines. Uh, we've actually learned about subroutines before, but now we're going to learn how to make our own subroutines. So some objectives and announcements for today. Uh, first, we're going to learn how to uh, write custom subroutines so we can avoid copying and pasting the same code over and over again. And just a quick announcement, I, I finished all the grading up until now, and so you can find all those grades and information on Edmodo. There's a bunch of people who were missing things, or maybe they thought they handed something in, but they actually handed in, you know, a piece of the project instead of the whole thing. So before you watch this video, if you've already started, go back and make sure that you're all up to date in your grades uh, and everything is the way it should be. Uh, that's the most important stuff before you move on. All right, so for today, we'll talk about subroutines and we'll talk a little bit about variable scope. These are both things we learned a while ago, and then we'll learn how to write our own subroutines and then go through an example together. So let's start with uh, subroutine and variable scope review. So what's a subroutine? We learned this a long time ago. Uh, a subroutine is just a piece of code. It's a little chunk of code that executes uh, by itself. Uh, it, it's it, when you the code is executed and uh, and then it, and then it's done. It's just a chunk of code. So uh, you've seen examples of this before. Here's a form with one button on it, right? And if I'm editing this and I double click on on the button, uh, the code will come up that says this. It says private sub button one click and then it says a bunch of junk that's not important and then it says end a sub at the bottom and this is telling us that this subroutine will execute when somebody clicks button one okay any of the code uh, in here okay anything that you put in there will run once somebody clicks the button and then once we get to end the sub then nothing else will run anymore so basically everything in between these two lines of code runs when you click the button it's a subroutine it's a chunk of code that runs uh, one line at a time you know, from beginning of the subroutine to the end. Okay, so we've known that for some time. It should be pretty easy. We have subroutines for clicking on things. We have subroutines for when the form first loads. Um, but let's talk a little bit about variable scope. This is something different. Uh, so if you remember, we have these local variables and we have global variables. A local variable, we declare those within the subroutine, right? You can say dim my variable as integer and you do it uh, within the subroutine, but then that dies when the subroutine ends. So if you remember, right, we have a form with a button on it. When you click the button, if it's a local variable, the computer puts a little space for the variable. It puts whatever data it wants in there. But then once the subroutine ends, say goodbye to that variable. Remember that if you want to save it, you have to declare it as a global variable. And to do that, you declare it at the very top of the program. Okay, and that dies when the program closes. So you can use it between different subroutines. When I press the button, in comes a little data, but then after the subroutine ends, well, we still have that data, another subroutine could use it. All right, so that's subroutines and variable scope. That's, that's all review. Uh, now we're gonna learn how to make our own subroutines. This is the meat of today's lesson. All right, so uh, in visualbasic.net, which is the Visual Basic that, that we're using, all of the subroutines, uh, for objects on your form already exists, right? So if you want to talk about button one click, like when you click the button, form one load when the form initially loads, uh, there's one for when text is changed in a text box. It has a ton of different subroutines already preloaded in there for specific events. So when the user clicks on something, there's a subroutine for that. But we also have uh, the ability to write our own uh, our own chunks of code that we can make run whenever we want, right? So uh, we don't have to just have the subroutines that are provided to us by Visual Basic. We can also write our own. That's what we're going to do. So why? Why would we want to do that? What would be the point in that? So uh, your first assignment, this is an example, uh, is is uh, is to make tic-tac-toe, a little tic-tac-toe program, okay? And you can see over here on the right side, there's this little thing that says whose turn is it, and it's telling us it's X's turn, right? Now these nine boxes for playing tic-tac-toe, uh, every time you click on one of them, right, they're either going to say X or O, okay? And the whose turn button should change from X to O to X to O to X, right? So that's nine different buttons. So we could write the code to make whose turn change in each of the subroutines for all of the nine buttons, right? We can say, all right, if it's X, make it O, otherwise make it X. And then again here, if it's X, make it O, and otherwise it's X. And again, we have to do that nine times. 
which wouldn't be that big a deal. We could write it once and then copy and paste it nine times. Okay, but then the problem becomes, what if I made a mistake in that code? Then I have to go to all nine different places where it is, and I have to edit it. And so you can see how if I could have a subroutine, my own custom chunk of code that ran whenever I clicked on these buttons, well then, I, if I made a mistake, I'd only have to do it in one place. And then each of these buttons, I would just need one line of code that says, run my subroutine. Uh, and that's what we're going to learn how to do. So it, it's for whatever you have to use a, a piece of code a lot of times, it's appearing in many different places in the program. It's good to write a custom subroutine for that. Uh, so that way, uh, if, if there's a problem with it, you can fix it in one place. And also, it stops you from copying and pasting something a million times. So how do we do it? How do we actually write it? Uh, so here's the usage. And this would be great for the example section of your vocabulary sheet. Uh, you start by writing private sub. And then you write the subroutine's name with some parentheses that open and close like this. Okay, uh, this is just like the form that you see uh, for the subroutines that already exist. It says private sub button one click. Okay, but we're writing our own. So we say private sub and then you give it a name. And again, you want to name it something that, uh, that makes sense. Uh, and so in that subroutine name, you can see I have an underscore there. Can't have any spaces or anything in it like that. And then at the end of the subroutine, of course, you need the end sub to tell the computer you're done with the subroutine. And then inside those two things, you can put any code you want. So whenever this subroutine is run, you can make it do whatever you want. All right, but so we've written, let's say, a subroutine. Now, how do we actually use it? Uh, so we just simply use the subroutine's name and that little set of, pare set of parentheses that we had before. So uh, let's, for example, let's write our, ourselves a subroutine. This is called uh, private sub. This is called hello world sub. Okay, it's my subroutine for hello world. And I have my n sub. And so I'm writing a custom subroutine called hello world sub. And anything that I put between private sub and n sub will run uh, whenever I want to run this subroutine. So we're just going to put a message box in there that says hello world with an extra w because I can't spell. Um, and this isn't particularly interesting. And you probably wouldn't write a subroutine that does this, but it's just an example. And so basically, I've written a subroutine so that anytime this subroutine runs, this chunk of code executes, a message box will come up that says hello world. Okay, now let's say I have a button on my form somewhere, say a button one click, whatever. This subroutine comes up automatically when Visual Basic generates the subroutine for it. And if I want to run my hello world subroutine within the button one subroutine, all I have to do is call, it's called calling hello world. So I just say hello world sub like that. And that means that when somebody presses the button, this, uh, this code will execute, it says, all right, run the subroutine called hello world sub. And so the code jumps up here and runs this subroutine. Hmm, interesting. So a subroutine can be called anywhere you want. And it's defined here between private sub and end sub. A little bit tricky. All right, so we're going to try an example. Hopefully this will make it a little bit more clear. And we're going to do the example that I, that I just mentioned with tic-tac-toe. Uh, so if you haven't done this already, uh, we're going to be working with that tic-tac-toe program. So what you want to do is pause this video if you haven't done this. Uh, and then you want to download this first assignment from Edmodo and extract the zip file to your USB stick and set it up, get it up and running so that you can have this on the screen and the video on the screen. And you can pause and work back and forth so we can do this example together. Okay, so here I am again uh, doing the tic-tac-toe program. And like I said before, I have this, this uh, label over here. It's called the who's next label. Okay, and right now it starts, X gets to start first. But every time we click any one of these nine buttons, uh, we want the who's turn to switch from X to O to X to O to X to O. Now there's more to this assignment than just that, right? You have to make tic-tac-toe happen. But for starters, uh, every time you click one of these buttons, then we want this who's turn thing to switch to X to O. Now we have nine different buttons. They're all pre-named for you because I was feeling kind. Okay, they're called the top left button, the top middle button, etc. Okay, I'm going to get all the, the subroutines up for them. Now notice as I double click on each of these, Visual Basic is automatically generating a subroutine, the middle right button click, for example. Okay, and you can see the private sub and end sub. This is just like the subroutine we learned how to make, except this is an automatic one that Visual Basic makes for when the button is clicked. Uh, but we're actually going to write our own in a second. And let me just get all of these different subroutines up there. There we go. Okay, good. So uh, here we have all the different subroutines for the different buttons. Now, uh, every time I click one of these buttons, I want this X 
to go to O, or this, if it's an O, we want it to go to X. We want this to alternate, right, between X and O. Now, in each of these, I could write the if statement, if label, da 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 da, da. And then I would have to do that in each of these subroutines to make it happen for all nine of the buttons, okay? And then, like I said before, if I made a small mistake, well, even if I copied and pasted it, I have to make the change in all of the different subroutines, and it would take forever. So instead, we're going to write our own custom subroutine that changes this from X to O to X to O and so on. Okay, we're going to do it together. So find some space on the form, whether it's up here or here, somewhere that is not inside a subroutine already. So right here would be a great place to write it, or I could put it between these two if I wanted, but I'm going to put it down here in some empty space. I'm going to write, write my own subroutine that changes that label from X to O and so on. So we start by writing private sub that says, hey, I'm making a subroutine, and then we have to name it. Uh, we're changing that label that, that says who's, whose turn it is. So we're going to say like change turn, okay? And then you just have little parentheses like that, and you're done. Uh, the computer plugs in the N sub for you, okay? So now anything that we put in here will be the code for our subroutine. Anything between the ch private sub change turn and where the subroutine ends. So what do we want to do in this subroutine? We want to make this label change from X to O and so on. Now this label is called the who's next label, so let's do it. Uh, so we're going to say if, if the label is currently X, we want it to be O. So let's do that. We say if the who's next label dot text is X, well then what do we want to have happen? We want who's next label dot text to be O, right? We're changing it to O. All right, that's easy. That'll only change it from X to O. Uh, we want to also change it if it if it happens to be O, then we want it to be X. So we can come down here and do a whole nother if statement, but that would be a, a lame way to do it. Instead, if whose next label.txt is x, all right, then we're going to make it o. But if it's not x, well, then it must already be o. So remember, we have this thing called else. Right? So we can say if whose next label.txt is x, then make it o. If it's not x, that means it already was o. So we'll say whose next label.txt equals x. So let's go through that one more time. Uh, we want to change the turn. If the who's next label is X, then we're going to make it O. Okay. But if the label is not X, well, that means it's already O, so then we want to make it X. Okay. Uh, good. So we've made our subroutine. It's between change turn and, and, and end sub here. And uh, it's, it's called change turn. Uh, it's going to change whose turn it is. Uh, and we've done it with this simple uh, if else statement. So let's go ahead and run our program and see what happens. No, it's not changing. I wonder why that's the case. That's it's kind of weird. I wonder why. All right, so let's let's go back and figure out what's wrong. Okay, well, we've made a subroutine. It's called change turn. But that's it. We haven't told the computer to run this subroutine anywhere. So there's two parts to a subroutine. It's defining it, saying here's the name of it, here's what it's supposed to do. But then you have to tell the, the code, you know, where does this run? Well, we want this to run every time that somebody clicks a button. And so again, we're going to have to put this in all of the button code, right? But we're not going to put all these lines of code there. We're just going to say, run my subroutine, which we say by using the name of the subroutine, change turn. Okay, so here we go. We're changing the turn if they press that button. I'm just going to copy and paste. We're changing the turn if they press that button, that button. We always want to change whose turn it is, right? All right, let's get it for all of them. And there we go. Oh, there's one more hidden right there. Okay, now let's run the code, and I bet this time it'll work just fine. Yep, every time we click a button, it changes whose turn it is. Now there's a lot more to this tic-tac-toe program. We need to make this say X and this say O, and then we need to check to see whether somebody's won or not. Uh, but that's a good start for it. So again, we defined our own custom subroutine that changes the label from X to O. And then every time we click one of the nine buttons in the boxes for tic-tac-toe, it says, hey, change the turn, run my change turn subroutine, which then executes this code right here. Now you got two assignments that deal with this. First, you're going to make that whole tic-tac-toe program go, which means not just the who's turn part, but also making the X and O's show up on the different buttons. And then uh, you're going to go back and look at the project uh, from last time. And uh, whenever somebody loses or whenever somebody gets it right, uh, you have to reset back to the beginning, right? You have to move the hangman guy back up to the top and change this back to five and make it green. Uh, and so uh, what I'm going to challenge you to do is to write a subroutine that resets it. And instead of uh, having the reset appear twice in your code, once for when somebody wins 
and one for when somebody loses. Instead, you're going to have one, uh, one, one subroutine that resets the whole thing. All right, so just some vocabulary. We already have the word subroutine in your uh, vocabulary sheet, but you should go back and make some changes to it because we've added a lot of information. Uh, particularly, you should put an example up in there of how to write your own subroutine.